What is anaerobic training? Very simply put, it just means without oxygen. Our first kind of fuel source or way of creating energy so that we can move, talk, exercise, do whatever function is oxygen. Our body obviously takes on board a certain amount of oxygen and that allows us to utilize or to create energy within the body. Once it struggles to get oxygen to a certain area, then we start to use other fuel sources and this other fuel source is typically glycogen. Strength training is considered an anaerobic portion of training. You could potentially perform a training set without breathing. Sprinting is anaerobic training. Again, you could run a certain distance depending on how your kind of lactic acid, how big your lactic acid threshold is, but you could run technically 100 meters without having to take a breath. For those that can do it in 10 seconds, that is a very likely possibility. At the very end, you will breathe heavy to try and recover and buffer through the lactic acid, but you could do it without breathing. So what I'm saying is anaerobic typically is very high intense exercises. Now in strength training, we do set, might take us 10, maybe 20 seconds, not much longer than that. And the rest of the time is spent recovering. There are massive benefits to introducing anaerobic training into your day. And I'm gonna list off a few of them to you now. One benefit is it increases bone strength and density. When we are, especially when we're doing strength training or if we're doing any kind of jumping or loading exercises, we are putting our body and our bones through impact and support. Now, when the impact is felt, the body will have to create, uh, it takes as a stimulus to go, we cannot be brittle for this or we will break. So it becomes more dense. Now for you guys that maybe are a little bit older, osteoporosis is something that could likely happen, especially for women, and especially for post-menopausal women as well. So we really do want to be focusing on getting our strength training as best as we can. The next benefit, promotes weight maintenance. I mentioned this in the previous video, that if we can increase the amount of muscle tissue we have, we can help to store more carbohydrates in our body which means there's less likely or less opportunity for it to be converted into stored fat. Also, when you're doing anaerobic training, your body is going to utilize glycogen as its primary and only fuel source. Unless you're going through ketosis, but that doesn't matter. So it's your primary fuel source. It has to be glycogen, uh, glycose, glycogen, sorry. Strength training, high intensity training. Now strength training is a lot more moderate than people give credit for. If I get you to sprint, you have to have the ability to move your body really, really fast and sprint at a high intensity. But at strength training, you can build up to a point of start with the exercise light and then build it up to a point of intensity where we are now utilizing as much stored glycogen as we can. We can increase power. It's not important to many of you, but there is a part when you get older that science is now starting to look into how much power output you have and how closely that relates to your metabolic health and how your body can perform tasks through your day-to-day -day living so power is quite important but it gets more important the older you get not necessarily the younger you get unless you're in sport boost metabolism so this word metabolism gets thrown around all the time and basically it happens all the time in your day but however when you do strength training you are increasing the rate of muscular breakdown and cellular damage. So your body then has to recover that cellular damage If because if it didn't, you wouldn't survive that continuous aggressive rate of breakdown. So your body has to metabolize materials, fats, it has to convert uh, protein into aminos so that your body can actually repair itself, recover and get stronger for the next, the next task or the next thing. So it can help boost your metabolism, but so can eating because that's also another process. So don't look into that one too much. Fights depression. Now this is interesting and I'm going to use experience from this one and not just my personal experience, but experience with clients. One of the things that I say to people is that strength training is a form of meditation, not because you get to escape your real world and come here, but more so because you have to focus on one thing, which is what meditation is. With meditation, typically your root will be breathing, breath work, focusing on the in and the outs and the holds and, and only being able to focus on your breathing, nothing else. Now with strength training, especially if you're being coached by me and working with me, you'll know that I get you to focus a lot on exactly what your muscle's going through. And the more you can focus on the muscle and not the action of pain or the action itself, the more then you get from the exercise. 
and you just can become hyper focused on achieving good quality repetitions workout after workout when you're in a pull up and all you can think about is pulling yourself up that is hyper focus you're meditating in that moment and this is why i think it's very important for depression but coming back to depression when you are hyper focused it kind of gets rid of the distraction of all the other things that take place in your life and sometimes allows for a route of clarity now not saying that depression is all about having a busy mind but it, part of it is is that you're overthinking about all the negative things that you've been exposed to you've experienced and it just sits here sometimes where you think you should be and you're not it sits here and all of this weight of everything sits in your mind but having a moment to switch off from that is going to be really really important the following to that is also we all know that when you go out and you run and you train or do any form of exercise whatsoever that the increase of or the demand for certain hormones to become present or for um, the increase of oxygen demand means that your mood is elevated now in running this is going to be more immediate right you go out you breathe heavy oxygen is being taken on board a lot more breathing out more carbon dioxide now you're thinking about just running the scenery you become focused but in strength training this potentially could last longer and the reason being is because you do all the hard work in your training the meditation you focus on that one thing that one outcome that one repetition then when you are recovering you're thinking about recovery and then when you go home you're thinking about the workout and you're thinking about recovery and your body is demanding more oxygen in order to metabolize more materials in order for it to recover so it's very likely and this study seems to conclude that that is, is the case that when we do increase our, our oxygen demands uh, and other things then we put ourselves into a state where we are less likely to feel depressed so strength training is a massive one for that reduce the risk of disease now this one actually has come to my attention as well is that when you are let's just say you you're building a stronger body basically you're building a stronger vessel that's going to allow you to go through life and you're teaching your body certain valuable skills of breakdown and recovery as a natural process so you're challenging your body to become this more resilient vessel vessel that is a true statement to reduce the risk of disease is going to happen but also now as we get older people that seem to pick up diseases more often became are the elderly but one of the reasons that's become brought to light is actually due to their risk of injury their lack of balance their lack of strength typical day-to-day -day tasks become very challenging so standing up becomes really hard and if a per old person falls their likelihood of surviving the fall for five to five or so years later increases their chances of of death it's quite scary so, well realistically we are trying to build bodies that can be really resilient but also balanced and strong so we're less likely to fall and if we do fall we have this ability this skill set that allows us to recover from that fall faster than the average elderly person the strength training no matter what your age is is going to be important there too and then final point is it boosts your energy giving your body a reason to use energy means it's going to require more energy and that in turn will make you feel more energized but also when you're putting your body through vigorous exercise you then feel better feel more capable and all of this builds into the picture of energy but also then it becomes your center point if you train hard and you want to train harder and harder each time you then focus a little bit more on your recovery am i sleeping good am i eating well can I do more to aid my recovery? Can I do more to get stronger? And all these things lead to you increasing and changing your energy. So if this video doesn't convince you that strength training is important, maybe I'll make another one, but there's a lot of things in there that I'd say are really highly valuable to you.